And then one day, on many, many of the doctor's visits that we had had, um, I think, uh, you know, I was home. No, I was at, I was at work. And uh, something said, hey, go home, like rush back home. So I rushed back home. And uh, when I went there, she was you know, not feeling well. So I took her back to the ER and um, she stayed there for three days. I was, I'm always there anytime that she's at the ER. You're looking for me, you see her, right? And um, I'll never forget. In the, on the morning of the 23rd of uh, May, um, I walked in and no, let me put it this way. Let me let me backtrack a bit. One step back. On the 22nd of May, that was our wedding anniversary. She was at the hospital. We always go there, doctors. They all knew us. Every one of them knew us over there. And uh, every time you go to this, uh, the hospital and you hear it called blue, it never registers to you. Um, I'm just telling you, if you ever hear that, pray. If you ever hear the sirens of an ambulance, pray for whoever's in it. I always go to the hospital with my then wife. We would go to the ICU, CCU, and I always walked out with her. But then on the 22nd, after our wedding anniversary, it was my best, then, uh, my best friend at that time. Um, and uh, her mother. You know, I was ready, we were ready to go home. And uh, she called me to the bed. And she said, um, Frank. And I was like, yeah, you know, but this time around she looked serious. She was like, if I don't make it. And I'm like, don't say that. You know, that was my best friend. Come on, don't say that. We will make it out of here every single time you come in. We'll make it out of here, don't worry. She's like, I'm serious. If I don't make it, this and that is what I want you to do. And uh, my friend, my then friend, uh, my 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 best friend, one of my best friends, uh, who happens to be a, a, a pastor, right? Pate, uh, was there, and I was like, "Don't say that." You know, it was like wedding anniversary. I had the nurses sing for us. You know, we we're ready. We we're, we're gonna go. You know, um, in the morning. I walked in and uh, I actually saw my wife passing away in front of me. I begged God to trade lives if I could. I asked God like, please trade my life, bring it back. Like I was begging her to stay, she was gone. I had never felt more useless than a man ever in my life till that moment. If you think, you know, and maybe it's because that person meant a lot to me. I was begging God and I was begging her to stay. But she just like, no, she wants to go. Every single time that we get that prayer, and I was like, God, please let her stay, let her stay. I remember we we'll contact Pentecost Prayer and Company in Ghana. We'll, they will all be praying for her. They had heard her name so many times, but no one had sent her. My dad, me, and you know, and she was like, I, I, I remember telling her, and she knew. I'm like, I, I, even if you were broken and you were sitting in a wheelchair, I would still be happy to push you around and kiss you every morning to tell you you're my wife. Because that's the level of support she gave me. She was always encouraging me, never looked down on me. But who was I? I was just a mere madman. At that point in time, I couldn't do anything. They called cold blue on us. She was gone. I remember I was just begging God, begging God, please, please. I come in here with her every single month. We stay for two weeks. You come and see me over there probably a week. I haven't even taken a shower. Please, like, please. 
I've been raised my life to believe in God all my life. Everything that you can think about had happened to us at that point in time. And I'm like, the last support that I had was my wife and you took it from me. I was sitting on the floor by her side, holding her that I would not let her go. Doctors came in, everyone, I was like, no. I remember calling my my mom, calling um, my friend, Ate, calling her parents. Everyone that heard it said, oh, because of the type of person she was. And I was like, you really are gonna leave our son, me, your your family, you're gonna leave this, like this, 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 this life. I was 30 years old and I'm like, what is this life? Like, what is this? Sitting on the floor and I remember the song that came into my mind, you know, praise is what I do, no matter what I'm going through. You know, I, 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 I turned to praise you through the good and bad, but in my soul, I was like, God, man, this is not it. I sit on the floor, I'm like, the, at that moment, I'm not Joe, but I knew what that man might have felt. Hmm. I just felt like my entire life was just coming down crushing me. You know, because it was not just anyone, this was my best friend. I remember one time she said something that I've never heard before in my life. She said, Frank, even if I'm gone, I will tell God to support you and our son. I'm like, stop your nonsense. Mm. And our favorite preacher at that time was Pastor Tony Evans. So he always used, instead of using someone that he always used when some, someone got promoted. And I remember a pastor, family members came in after that and here I am, walking out of that hospital doors, knowing that my wife is no longer with me. Right? And, you know, it, it was painful. I'm not gonna sit here and lie, I mean, it still hurts, right? It's not because it's a story of someone that just passed away someone that literally helped you and also kind of taught you a lot in life, right? We, we all came on a journey in this country, right? You go to people, you walk in people's homes, everyone has their perception. But this is someone that never knew who I was, where I came from. All she, do, she knew was, I'm gonna love this man, I'm gonna care about him and respect him. And I did the same for her. We had nothing. Today, you hear people, everyone has money, and they feel that's the only way. We had God. Mm. That's all we had. We had love. We had forgiveness. <laughs> that is all it took. Right. And we had the understanding that, you know what? This is the greatest opportunity or gift that God can give to us. And um, I'll say, uh, from that moment, if I tell you that I'm not be struggling, I'll be lying to you. When I say struggling, not on a physical point, but more of an emotional point, right? I had to learn every year through mistakes, through anger with God. Because I never thought that I'll get to a point in time in my life where, God, you've given me a little bit of happiness and that meant the world to me, my mm. wife, son. I didn't need a fancy car, a big house, none of that. And here I am now folding my wife's clothes. Try that. She's no longer here. You were looking at clothes, you probably bought her or she bought herself and she showed you when it was so nice. 
and you're packing your things, her things, holding them. Moving into a storage. You know.